How you doing, YouTube? Matt Nassa Beer Reviews. Back with a fun beer. Fun review time. Why am, who am I? The Kembe Motombo? Why am I wagging my finger at you guys? I have no idea. This be Lawson's Finest Liquids. This is their Maple Brown Ale. It's an ale. Maple Nipple. It's their Maple Nipple. Tweaked Maple Nipple. Aged in Whistle Pig Rye Whiskey Barrels. Um, this was canned in November of uh, 2020. We are now in May of 2021. Um... Keep cold, enjoy fresh. Uh, as far as what it says on the side here, it says a maple brown ale brewed in collaboration with Whistle Pig Rye, uh, whiskey of Shoreham, Vermont, for experimental spirits project. Uh, made with Vermont maple syrup from Puritan Maple Farms, Puritan, not Puritan, sorry, uh, farm of Huntington, Vermont, and Asian with uh, Whistle Pig Rye whiskey barrels. So, we're gonna do this. Rye whiskey. I cannot tell you the last time I actually had a rye whiskey, to be perfectly honest with you. It's been a while. I'm not a big, huge rye whiskey guy. I'm more of a scotch guy, as you can see my little collection of scotch bottles up there, if you can actually see them. Probably see them more in the live stuff than you do on this. But yeah. If only. If only I had some of this whiskey to drink along with it. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I have not drank liquor on this channel before. But we're gonna do it because we have the actual whiskey um, that this barrel, this beer was barreled in. So we're gonna save it towards the end. I don't want the beer itself to kind of overpower. So we'll slide this sucker over here for now, and then see what we got going on. Yeah. This comes courtesy my boy Nick. Um, he sent off the beer and the whiskey. So we'll see what's what. I dig myself some maple nipple. I really do enjoy it. I've had it a couple times. I've reviewed it before. I've actually reviewed it as a mystery beer before. Um, yeah. That looks quite a bit darker than what I remember maple nipple looking like. Again, you got to keep in mind, it's not maple nipple. It's maple nipple tweaked for a barrel, which is what you should do. I mean, there are some beers that are really well translated to being a barrel beer, but more often than not, when you're making a beer, you definitely want to uh, make a beer for a barrel. 12.5. Uh, I know Maple Nipple is not that big, so you know it's a tweak version. It's not getting that much booze from these spirits over here. But it has this nice kind of barley wine look to it, you know. You're talking about a 12.0% maple brown ale. That's essentially what you're talking about here. It's not overly turbid. You can definitely see through it, even though it looks pretty dark to you guys. I could see right through the beer coming down at an angle here. You have a soft white khaki head on it. Yeah. Let's see if we get a nose. Man, that smells really nice. It does smell like a slightly hot, slightly spicy, burnt brown sugar, almost, almost. We started at burnt brown sugar. We're erring towards uh, um, sugar daddy, but you get that little bit of heat and that bit of spice from the actual rye barrel in it too. Nice and sweet, caramel driven, nothing as far as bittering a nose, but there is a spiciness along with a little bit of kind of alcohol burn off. That's giving you a little bit of evaporative kind of isopropyl kind of vibes in there. It smells really fun. It smells really nice. Yeah. I like that. We're just going to dive in. Cheers. There's a decent amount of whiskey in here. I thought the beer was going to be bigger. Um, there's a nice kind of rich kind of, it, it, it circled back a little bit more towards a, like a, a, br a really decently kind of caramelized kind of brown sugar more than that sugar daddy. There's a bittering in here too, which I'm kind of impressed by. And I think it's actually, since the beer kind of lacks a bit of, s not sweetness, but richness, if that makes anything else, it makes uh, some sense. I think you need a third player in there to kind of balance this beer out, um, because I think that whiskey is a decently large in this beer and i think that kind of spiciness of the hop marries well with the rye whiskey barrels that adds a third kind of component to the beer so it's not just whiskey and a bit of beer it's whiskey bit of bittering and a beer it levels the playing field a little bit if that makes any sense mouthfeel is fine it's not thin you'd love thicker i feel like there's a decent amount of booze in here Wet barrels were involved, I assume. It's fine. It's tasty. The maple portion of the show, I don't think was ever hyper-aggressive in maple nipple. So I don't know how they ramped up and tweaked that maple addition for this. 
it's here. It's unmistakable. But it's like a fourth or fifth player here. The biggest thing uh, playing here is a, a vibrant and aggressive but not overly hot whiskey. I mean, it, it's a rye whiskey. You get it. You get this pop of heat. But it's not like a burning thing. It's not like, whoo, you know, light a, light a match and you breathe fire kind of thing. It's not that. But is the leader in the clubhouse. Uh, second off is probably a marriage of the malts and, and, and bittering in here. I'm going to say bittering instead of hops because I believe... How do I uh, walk it back? The malts in a spiciness. That's a better way to put it. Because at spiciness, I believe you're getting from the whiskey. Um, I believe you're probably getting a little bit of spiciness, charringness from the barrel itself. And I also believe you're getting that spiciness from, excuse me, burps, um, from some hops. In equal parts with this pretty much Imperial Brown Ale. I talked about an Imperial Brown Ale, 12%. You're pretty much talking about a barley wine. There are distinct differences, and this is where this one actually comes to a head. This is not a barley wine base. This is actually just a beefed up kind of uh, kind of brown ale. So, well, it's not my favorite barrel aged beer I've ever had in my life. It's a fun combination, and I'm impressed with how aggressive the whiskey is, without overpowering the beer. You're like, no shit, Sherlock. It's 12.5% beer. I think a decent amount of that is the booze. Um, but it, it, it's not ripping through the beer. It's not completely clobbering the beer with how aggressive it is. Because it is. It is number one in the, in the leaderboard as far as what's the biggest portion of this beer. But you're still getting that maple. You're still getting those malts. You're still getting that spiciness, which I believe comes from parts outside of the whiskey itself. I kind of like it. I think it's fun. Like I said, not my favorite all the time, but fun. So let's drink some of this. Get a nose on this. Maybe do a little magic. Oh, look at this tiny little cork. Oh, my God. Well, let's do this. Can you hear that? Let's do it again. Put it right up. There you go. <laughs> look at that. Looks like my baby's wiener. Uh, actually, my son's junk is quite large. Thank you very much. Um, is this a... I, I bet you this is a perfect dram. That's what this is for. That's what that is. Yeah, see? Got my little fancy... A little whiskey glass out here. And we'll put this sucker right over there for you guys to look at, even though it's going to fall. And yeah. I mean, it looks like whiskey. You know, uh, whiskey is, you know, not my forte. Uh, I am a, a scotch, single malt scotch, space side scotch. I'm not one of those peat mossy ILA people. But, uh, you know, it looks like pretty much all whiskey. Like uh, Irish whiskey, um, rye whiskey, scotch. I mean, bourbon tends to be a bit darker. Um, but, you know, the older it is, the better it is. And this is 10 years in a barrel. So you're talking about 10-year-old scotch or 10-year-old whiskey, I should say. Automatically default to scotch. So let's give it a nose. That smells pretty good, actually. It comes off from my limited experience on really diving into this it comes off way more mature than a 10 10 year old spirit you know uh, as someone who hangs their hat on old being better <laughs> when it comes to barley wines and whiskeys you know like i'm i'm a novice when it comes to um spirits but um i have had you know 15 year old scotch and I have had 60, 70 year old scotch. That's right, I've had that. I've had multiple bottles of those. I couldn't afford that shit, but I've had friends that have been very generous over the years. I like the 60 year old bottle better than the 15 year old bottle. Um, but every now and then you do get breweries or distilleries that do whiskey um, and, and are be able to kind of, I don't want to say fake, but. Um, bring out a rich with depth kind of spirit from the, from those barrels in a shorter period of time. One of my favorite Scotch producers that does that is Gren Ross. Um, uh, I like what they do. A lot of their, you know, 18, 20 year old bottles drink a little closer to like 25, 30. So that's where I kind of lean, but you know, and I, I've probably tasted less than 10 rye whiskeys in my life. Um, and I, while well, I've enjoyed them, it's not something I really kind of, I get into, but when I drink this, or I should say smell this, I haven't drank it yet, I smell something that in my brain translates more to a 20-year-old bottle of scotch. I think that's quite impressive. One more sniff. 
and a sip. Cheers. Not gonna lie. That's pretty fucking good. Like, straight up. That's delicious. Wow. Now, full disclosure, I'm drinking this the way... I'm drinking this so you people won't get mad at me. I'm, I'm one of those people that likes this tiniest little piece of ice thrown in there. Thrown in there. Scotch. People look blasphemy. That's the worst whatever. Fuck you. That's the way I like it. I drink coffee with cream and sugar. Um, and typically, that is for me just to kind of shave some edges off. Give a little bit of age to something a bit newer. I don't I don't do that with like the seven-year-old one, but the, you know, in a 20-year-old one I do. And while this has some bite to it, you know, it's quite flavorful. Um, you know, it's it's spicy, but not overly hyper aggressively spicy. The amount of vanilla I get off of this is absolutely bonkers. It is spicier. It's spicier than I give it credit for. Because I'm confusing the heat with the spiciness. Because there's a heat to it. That spice kind of lingers a little bit longer. It's really tasty. Maybe I need to revisit rye, sc rye whiskey. Because this is quite tasty. Let's put it this way. You know, I if I go... So, this is how my um, my alcohol consumption exists in, the, in my life, to give you guys... I know a very long review, but... So, I walk into a place to eat with family and friends. This is pre-COVID, obviously. And, you know, I sit down to eat. I'm not picky about where I eat as far as, like, uh, tap lists and all that stuff. If, if, if I'm in a big group of people, you know, perfect. We're all to go to some place with some good beer. But if they don't have it, I'm not going to be that guy to be like, I don't want to fucking go there. I don't want fucking good beer. I'll find something to drink. Let's put it that way. So, you know, first thing I do, look at the beer list. Boom. Done. Nothing good. You know, if they have something like Stella or, you know, fucking... <laughs> they always have... Well, Miller High Life, I'll lean into as the last resort, even though I love that beer. I'll go that way. If they don't have that, I'll probably go gin and tonic just because I think that's more of a, um, it's like an alcoholic soda for me. But if I really want to get into whiskey, I start to like look around and I look at specific things. You know, I look at, you know, oh, do they have scotch? Okay, they have scotch. They have space side scotch. Okay, what does it cost? Those kind of things. I rarely look to the rye whiskey. But I can see myself ordering this. It's quite tasty. And the amount of vanilla I get off of this is amazing. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not the guy to be reviewing it. I mean, it's hot at first, hits you big. Each subsequent sip, a little bit less boozy. Obviously, you're kind of breathing that little bit of um, of um, evaporative alcohol. That's liquor. You're drinking it straight. There's a nice spiciness to it that lingers after that heat is dissipated. I like that. It's not overly aggressive, but it's there. It's got a really nice mouthfeel, you know, without adding any kind of temperature change to it, adding no water, drops of water, anything like that to it. It, it has a heft to it, but it doesn't come off as, like, rough. Um, and there has to be a decent amount of oak to it because, I mean, it is, I mean, well, the alcohol is going to dry you out, but then you have this big pop of dryness, but it's followed in par, in step, in concert with that vanilla, it's not something that comes off like a negative. It's dry vanilla. And I think that comes off really well. I like this. This is honestly, I'm going to tell you right now. I like drinking. I can't afford the thousand, hundreds and thousand dollar bottles of liquor. I just can't do it. Um, you know, if I don't make that kind of money. Uh, plus, I'd probably drink them too quick. Um, so if I'm going to drink liquor, I have a few staples that I go to. The Glen Ross Scotch, you usually can get a really nice bottle of that for between 40 to 80 to to $100. Um, I actually like Crown, Crown, even Maple Crown, stuff like that. I can kind of get, that's like cheap, like I'll dig it. I can get down with lower level scotches and stuff like that from time to time. 
Um, but like I said, most or more often than not, if I'm looking to have something outside of beer, it's going to be gin and tonic, you know. Um, but I could see myself getting into this kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's very cool. Thank you very much, Nick. Very cool. Well, let's do a comparison. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to pick up. No, I do. I was going to be like, I'm not going to be able to pick this up. I just, you know, I kind of crush my palate with this. It's not so much that I taste this in there, but from reviewing this beer and kind of talking about it and speaking to it over a period of time and then drinking this and going back to it, it's not that what I'm tasting, it's not like salt or sugar or either of those two. You know, if you eat something really sweet and then drink your coffee, you don't taste any sweetness in your coffee. You're like, this coffee sucks now and needs more sugar. That's not what's going on here. It's kind of like, okay, I'm getting a little bit of spiciness. I think it's kind of hops and combined with the spirit. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And you drink this and you go back to this and now it's not there. It's still there, but now it's like, okay, that's where that coming from. So that spiciness that I kind of attributed to the hops in here, I think is a lot to do with the actual spirit over here. I'm really, really disappointed that I didn't talk or I didn't really get much as far as vanilla over here. Now... I have a theory for that. Um, and that theory is me explaining why, why I didn't get it. Uh, I think the vanilla over here merges with the maple over here. I think the maple syrup over here isn't as big as I, I think it is. But since we get that dose of vanilla on top of that maple, those two confectionaries combine. And that's why I'm like, that maple's there, but it's, you know, it's not big, but it's there. I think without that vanilla portion of the show over here in the spirit, I don't think you get really as much maple as you would over here if that makes any sense markedly different tastes maple and vanilla but they're both the sweet confectionery portion of the show so i could see why both of those would combine this is a really fun side by side i've never like i said i've never done anything like this before i don't think i've ever i don't think i've ever drank liquor on my channel before um but this is a fun combination this would be really cool to do with, with several other beers i really like to do this with scotch barrel aged beers because or bourbon barrel aged beers or any of it because it, it, I'm like I'm one of those weird people where I love scotch and I'm not a huge scotch barrel aged guy but I'm not a big bourbon guy but obviously love bourbon barrel aged beers so it's nice to go back and kind of test and taste what you're getting on one end of the other very cool side by side thank you very much I'm gonna thank you 19 times Nick because it's very fun yeah let's wrap this sucker up Oh, I forgot. Hmm? Hmm? No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I want to enjoy that on its own merit. I really wanted to, though. So there you go. A little bit of Lawson's. Maybe brown the books. Pairing it with a little, um, was it, 10-year-old whistle pig. Rye whiskey. Very fun combination. My biggest takeaway from this is when I was going to talk about this beer, and how much I enjoyed it. I was like, I dig it. I think it's fun. It's really tasty, but it could be better. Drinking this alongside of it and going back to it, I like this beer quite a bit more. So, beer and liquor pairings. Who would have thunk it? No, kind of makes the beer even better. So, there you go. Reviewing the books. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Down there, if you want to talk about it, NASA beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, Beer Massif. If you want to check me out doing a whole podcasting thing, hopefully, you guys enjoyed your review. Hopefully, enjoying it a little bit of a side-by-side -side right now. Hope we'll see you next time. Cheers.